Hey everyone, in this video I show you how I created my short film for the Kid Best Secrets of the Luminara Challenge in just 3 weeks using Unreal Engine. I will break down my workflow, including the tools and plugins that help me to stay on schedule. You will see how I use the Dash plugin, how I modeled the stone carvings, animated the scenes, and rendered everything. So, first I gathered the secrets of the Luminara kit. I installed Cargo and imported the assets into my Unreal project. I had a rough idea in my mind of what I wanted to create. In short, I wanted a dance jungle scene where a gate is opened and allowing a Lovecraftian creature to come through. I gathered some references. To organize them, I used the Dash plugin and its support feature but you could use Milanote or something similar. I think it's a good thing to create a mood block like this, because it helps solidify your vision. I collected some images to see how the ruins and structures naturally blend into a jungle environment. I also generated some AI images to reduce the time I'd need to spend composing the main scenes. Additionally, I gathered some inspiration for the godlike creature in my film. So I started blocking out my scene. I've put together a gate using Kitbash models, and I also used the bull tool in Unreal. After the main structure was complete, I roughly adjusted the landscape around it. The goal was to quickly set up a scene layout and position the camera to ensure I only work on what will be actually be visible in the final film. I deleted the default lights and added my Ultra Dynamic Sky blueprint. This plugin makes outdoor lighting much easier, and with just a few adjustments, I can achieve great results. I roughly set the light direction. I want only a small area to be illuminated, highlighting the gate. I will block the rest of the light with large rocks. As the viewer emerges from the dense, dark jungle, the lighting will naturally draw attention to the scene's main focal point. Finally, I created a camera sequence and animated the camera movement. I will scatter some rocks on the ground using the scattering tool of Dash. Dash is a handy Unreal Engine plugin that speeds up my workflow a lot. In the content browser, I can easily find my fab quick sudden polyhaven assets. I can also tag some of my own assets to make them easier to use with Dash. This way, I can search for my assets not only by name, but also by their properties. I select a few assets, I hold down Ctrl and drag and drop them onto the landscape. I click on Scatter here, then adjust the density and surface align. We can also use noise masking to refine the scattered elements and even mask them using a curve. In the proximity masking section, I added the curve to the scatter tools panel and set up the mask. As you can see, the mask follows the curve. I 
I also scattered a few bushes in the cliff walls. The feature masking section in Surface Cutter provides a lot of flexibility for masking. Scattering was also a huge help when I created the vines hanging from the structures. I used the draw curves tool to roughly place a curve around the edges of the structures. Then I fine-tuned them a bit. After that I added the curve and the meshes I wanted to scatter along it to the path scatter tool. Here are plenty of options too, like density, scale and spin. Moving the curve points also move the scatter meshes along with them. I use the same method here for the edges of the ruins. Now I will show you how to create a vertex blend material using Dash. I select three pixel materials from the Fab tab in the content browser and by holding Ctrl I drag them onto my mesh. In the tool panel I adjusted the tiling and checked how the three layers blend together. I can also add a puddle layer or even a snow layer if needed. Here I can adjust the wetness and the night displacement as well. This is also where I can set the color of the layers. Another tool that helps to quickly add details to the scene is the Wine tool. In the Dash content browser, I browse through my atlas textures. Since Fab doesn't currently support Quixel atlases, I downloaded them using the old Quixel bridge. If your atlases don't show up in the content browser, check your file path settings under Preferences. Here I select an atlas, hold down Ctrl and I drag it onto a mesh. In the tools panel, I adjust settings like size, iteration, and leaf scale. Here, moving the actor allowed me to change the spawning point easily. For the wall carving, I didn't have the time for modeling. And I also couldn't find a suitable model. So, I created it from a depth map in Blender. First, I generated a few AI images. I found a great YouTube tutorial on converting them into depth maps. You can find the link in the description. I select the image and within minutes, I had the depth map. In Blender, I create a new texture and add my depth map. Then I create a plane, subdivide it a few times. And apply the subdivision surface modifier along with the displacement modifier. I assigned the map as a texture and the result was instantly visible. For now, I applied the AI generated image as a texture. Oh, and I forgot to turn off the face orientation, sorry about that. I placed the model into the portal ring and adjusted it slightly in sculpt mode to fit the shape.
Back in Unreal, you can see that my model is now broken into pieces and has a new material. I used Unreal's Chaos Destruction System for the fractures. For the material, I once again used the Blend Material tool. I also applied a few decals. Let's move to the tentacles emerging from the gate. I didn't want to spend too much time on the bone animation, so I simply drew a few curves in Blender and the tentacles will slide along them. I use Bernhardt's Van der Ho's tentacle pack and it's an excellent pack and absolutely worth the price. In Blender I added a curve modifier to the tentacle and assigned one of my curves as the object. Then I set two keyframes on the x-axis and just like that the tentacle smoothly slides along the path. I repeated this process for the other curves as well and then exported them as Alembic files. But it turned out I couldn't avoid bone animation. For this snowy scene I created a bone animated tentacle which I duplicated a few times. The blizzard was done using easy snow. Now let's talk about the soldier animations. Due to the time constraints and because I'm not great at animating, I downloaded some free animations from Mixamo. The soldier models are from big, medium, small. It takes minimum effort to integrate them onto your project. They also have great step-by-step -step tutorials on how to animate them using Mixamo animations. Unfortunately, I am also not very skilled with the Niagara system yet, and I didn't have the time to learn it for this project. So, for the portal effect, I used One Studio's portal pack. In the end, I started rendering the scenes at night using the path tracer with these settings. Unfortunately, I had to realize that path tracer rendering wasn't sustainable due to the deadline, so I rendered a few scenes with Lumen using these settings. After rendering, I did the color grading in DaVinci Resolve. And that's pretty much it. This short film was quite a challenge for me to put together in just a few weeks and I'm sure I will do many things differently in my next challenge. Overall, I'm glad I finished it in time. I learned a lot. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.